Part 1. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will hear the recording once only. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 4. OK, who's next please? I think I am. How can I help you? I just came in on flight 372 from Singapore at 11.30 and my luggage hasn't arrived. I've been waiting at the baggage claim for about half an hour now and everything seems to have come off the plane. The conveyor belt has stopped and all the passengers have gone. So I came here to find out what has happened to my bag. Can I see your ticket, please? Here it is. So you came from Hong Kong today and changed planes in Singapore, right? Yes. The connection in Singapore was a tight one. The plane got in late and I had to rush to get to the next flight. That's the problem right there. There wasn't enough time to get your bags onto the connecting flight. Normally, Singapore Airport is very efficient. Now, I need you to fill in these forms. Your name? Jenny Lee. Address? I guess you want my address here. I'm staying with relatives. Just a minute, I'll have to look it up. It looks like 583. No, it's 533 East 67th Street in Riverside. Do you have the phone number there? Yes, I do. It's um, 9301-4269. So you came in on Qantas Flight 392. Do you know the number of the flight out of Hong Kong? Let me see. I think it was Cathay Pacific 900 or something. Oh, yes. It says here... CX912. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Right. Now, I need a description of the luggage. How many pieces did you check in? Just one. Can you describe it for me? Here is a picture to help you. OK. It's a big bag, like this one. Rectangular. Not hard shell, but soft covered. And it has a zipper around the front. Is it black? No, sort of a grey colour. Any identification? Just a tag with my name on it. Any other features? Well, it has wheels and a retractable handle on the end, so you can pull it, as well as the handle in the middle. OK, that's fine. Now, if your bag missed the connection, I'm sure it'll be put on the next flight. I'll email Singapore as soon as I finish here the next flight comes in at 17.50. That's 10 to 6 this evening. You can pick it up then. 10 to 6? That's too long to wait. Can I get my uncle to pick up the bag on his way home from work? Sorry, you have to be here yourself to clear customs. Of course, I almost forgot. Will the bag come here, to this desk? Yes. You pick it up here, then take it over to the customs area. By the way, don't forget to bring your passport. You will also need to have the key plus your ticket with a baggage claim number on it. Oh, OK. Guess I'll have to come back tomorrow then. It's lucky I packed everything I need for now in my carry-on bag. Yes, that's always a good idea. Be prepared. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute 
to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a talk on ginseng. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. Good morning. Today we'd like to talk with Mr. Schumacher of Kaiser Farms. Mr. Schumacher, what is in ginseng that makes it so special? Thanks. The key elements in ginseng are the active ingredients known as ginsengocides. All true ginseng products on the market contain a certain percentage of ginsenocides and a number of factors determine how much. The age of Wisconsin ginseng when harvested plays a major role in determining the natural level of ginsenocides. Tests have shown that the older the plant, the higher the ginsenoside content. Five-year-old Wisconsin ginseng plants have had ginsenoside levels as high as 20%. As a family operation, one of our strategies in producing the highest quality product available is to only harvest four- and five-year-old roots. The majority of Wisconsin ginseng harvested is three years old. The reason for this is that the expenses to care for and the possibility of disease increase as the plants become older. By limiting the amount of ginseng that we plant each year, we are able to provide the necessary attention and care to produce the highest quality four- and five-year-old roots. Now look at questions 15 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 15 to 20. What is Wisconsin ginseng used for? There are two real species of ginseng on the market today, Panax, Korean or Chinese, and Panax, Quinquefolius, Wisconsin. Since ginseng has been used for thousands of years in China, it is easiest to explain the differences in ginseng by using traditional Chinese herbal philosophy. Wisconsin ginseng is considered a cooling type herb and Korean or Chinese ginseng are considered heating type herbs. As a cooling herb, Wisconsin ginseng is used as a preventative medicine. Here in the United States, Wisconsin ginseng is considered an adaptogen. As an adaptogen, Wisconsin ginseng acts to normalize body functions and strengthen the immune system and other systems in the body. Over a longer period of time, it builds up energy and maintains the body at a higher level, acting to reduce stress and fatigue. As a heating herb, Panax ginseng is used more as a stimulant and is often prescribed in China when the body is recovering from an illness and is worn down and in need of a rapid boost of energy. It is only recommended to be taken over short periods of time and not continuously. Wisconsin ginseng is considered the premier ginseng in China because it can be taken on a continuous basis and acts as a preventative type medicine by slowly building up the body. Wisconsin ginseng fits in perfectly with the Chinese herbal philosophy of preventative type medicine. Unlike here in the US, where we often wait until we are ill to seek medical attention, 
The traditional Chinese medicinal philosophy concentrates on building up the body to prevent illness. Based on the way Wisconsin ginseng has been prescribed in China, it is the correct ginseng to be taken for the majority of the consumers. Travel to China and see firsthand the ginseng that is considered the world's finest ginseng. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a group of students, Henry, Joe, Nancy, and Gordon, discussing changes to their work experience placement arrangements. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Look, there's the notice that Professor Jones told us he'd be putting up, confirming the details of our work experience placements. But I thought that was already arranged. No, he said he'd have to check with the companies that the days we preferred were okay for them. Let's see if any have changed. Therese is not here today, but her name's first. It says the Uni Bookshop, Friday mornings, starting on the twenty-third of March. So nothing's changed. I'll let her know. What about Manuel? He's not here either. Is he still going to the music store in the High Street? If it's mainly music. Yes, he's still down for that on Friday afternoons, starting on the ninth. Um, the day's different. It's changed from Tuesday mornings, but that's okay. I'll tell him. He'll really enjoy listening to music all day. Now, where's my name? Henry. Here it is. I'm going to the beauty shop, and I said I preferred Thursday afternoons. Oh, good. That seems okay, and my start date hasn't changed either. Joe, what day did you opt for? I'm going to Highway Hotels on Monday mornings. Yes, that's okay, and starting on Monday the twelfth of March. Oh, has that been changed? Okay, I was scheduled to start the week before. I'll just make a note of that. What about me, Henry? Have I still got the Explore Travel service on Wednesday mornings? Just a minute. Where's your name?、Mm, let's see, Nancy. Okay, here it is. Explore Travel on Wednesdays. Yes, but afternoons. And starting date is Wednesday, the fourteenth of March. Has the date changed? No, not the date, just the time, which is fine. I'll get to sleep in. You lazy thing, Nancy. Chris's name is next on the list. Gorgeous gowns, fashions. What a name! Yes, it sounds good, doesn't it? I'm hoping he'll bring me some free samples. So, has he still got Wednesday mornings? Yes, Wednesday mornings, starting on the fourteenth of March. Okay, I'll tell him when I see him tonight that his arrangements haven't changed. Gordon, what about you? I chose that software company that makes computer games. I can't remember its name, 
but I ask for Tuesday afternoons. Oh, oh yes, here it is. Games to go on Wednesday mornings. There's a note here saying they have their weekly staff meetings on Tuesday afternoons, so that wouldn't be much use to you. That's why they've changed it to Wednesdays, starting on the twenty-first of March, so you can see their working setup. Okay, I'm glad they've changed it. I don't think I'd want to sit through a meeting every week. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now, as the conversation continues, answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. Can someone remind me what time we have to get to our placement in the afternoons? It says here, mornings start at nine a.m. and afternoon sessions at one p.m. Oh, that's a shame. I thought Professor Jones was going to change it to nine thirty a.m. and one thirty p.m. Yes. He did say that he'd try to make it later, but obviously that wasn't possible. By the way, just in case, what happens if we're ill or something and can't make it? Do we phone the college or the place we're going to? I think we have to phone the company first and then the college. Didn't you get the information sheet about work experience at our last seminar? No, I missed it because I had to go to the dentist. What else did it say? Well, we have to do a total of twenty-four hours altogether. So if we miss one of the arranged sessions, we have to organise another time to make up the hours. And he gave us details of the presentation we have to give about our work experience. Oh, really? What do we have to do? In week ten, we each have to give a presentation to the class about the company we've been with. It's thirty percent of our final mark for this subject. So it's going to be a lot of work. Yes, he's expecting us to do a lot of research while we're there, so that we can outline the history of the company, its management structure, number of employees, other branches, etc. And he said we should use lots of visuals such as diagrams and flowcharts during the presentation. Yes, and we should also include what we did each week. The different departments of the company or positions that we observed, and try to relate what we saw to our studies so far. He gave examples like management style, accounting systems, information technology, and so on. You were right. It sounds like lots of work. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk on Canada. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty.
Good morning and welcome to this talk on Canada. Many people think of Canada as a land of ice and snow. They think of it as a young country with few inhabitants, a country of English speaking white people. While some of this is true, it is also an inaccurate description of the country we call Canada. Canada lies in the northern half of the continent of North America. The most northern parts of Canada are sometimes called the land of the midnight sun because at certain times of the year the sun never sets and is still shining faintly at midnight. This northern part of Canada is cold and mostly snow covered all year round. Most of the people who live in this northern part of Canada are called Inuit or Dene. They were once called Eskimos. They are the original people of this land and are part of what are called the First Nation. As we move to the more southern parts of Canada, the land changes and so does the people. Moving from east to west in southern Canada, we travel from the Atlantic provinces of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. These small provinces with small populations border on the Atlantic Ocean. The land in these provinces is not very fertile, so fishing, forestry and mining are the main industries, although in some small areas agriculture is also important. If we travel west from the Atlantic provinces, we come to central Canada, composed of the large provinces of Quebec and Ontario. Both provinces are rich in natural resources, have fertile land and are the centres of industry for Canada's largest cities. Toronto and Montreal are found in these provinces. The province of Quebec is the centre of French language and culture in Canada. In fact, Montreal is the second largest French-speaking city in the world after Paris. Finally, in the far west of Canada, we come to the province of British Columbia. This province is separated from the prairies by the Rocky Mountains and is bounded on the west by the Pacific Ocean. British Columbia is often called simply the West Coast. British Columbia is an attractive place for tourists because of its mild climate, spectacular mountains, sea coast and beautiful forests. Agriculture, forestry, shipping and fishing are major industries in British Columbia. The people of this land of Canada are as varied as its landscape. The original settlers, those we call the people of the First Nations, came from Asia by crossing the Bering Strait from Siberia to Alaska. In their new environment, they developed many new languages and cultures. In the 16th century, the first Europeans arrived in eastern Canada. They came from Britain and France. By making treaties with the original inhabitants, they gradually established colonies in eastern and central Canada. After a war with France, Britain took over the French colonies in Quebec and eastern Canada. By the end of the 18th century, all of Canada was under British rule. From this time until the present century, most of the immigrants to Canada were British, Scottish and Irish. In this century, however, Canada has had an influence of settlers from all over the world. There are now hundreds of thousands of people from Asia, Africa and South America who now call Canada their home. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.